So this is actually a new generation. Uh, this is actually the printer that you see here on stage, and this is actually the new technologies we're working on now. But in reality, you know, we now have a long history of doing this. I'm going to share with you a clip in terms of uh, technology that we have had in patients now for a while. And this is actually a very brief clip, only about 30 seconds, of a patient who actually received an organ. I was really sick. I, I could barely get out of bed. I was missing school. It was just pretty much miserable. I couldn't, you know, go out and play, you know, basketball at recess without feeling like I was going to pass out when I got back inside. It was, I felt so sick. I was facing basically a lifetime of dialysis and I don't even like to think about what my life would be like if I was on that. So after the surgery, um, life got a lot better for me. I was able to do more things. I was able to wrestle in high school. I became the captain of the team and that was great. I was able to be, you know, the normal kid with my friends and because they use my own cells to, you know, build this bladder, it's going to be with me. I got it for life, so I'm all set. These experiments sometimes work, and it's very cool when they do. Luke, come up, please. No. <laughs> so, Luke. I before last night, when's the last time you saw Tony? Ten years ago, when I had my surgery, and it's really great to see him. <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Well, right now, I'm in college at the University of Connecticut. I'm a sophomore and studying communications, TV, and mass media. And basically trying to live life like a normal kid, which I always wanted growing up, but it was hard to do that when I was born with spina bifida and my kidneys and bladder weren't working. I went through about 16 surgeries and it, was, it seemed impossible to do that when I was in kidney failure when I was 10. And this surgery came along and basically made me who I am today and saved my life. And, and Tony done hundreds of these? What I know from he's he's working really hard in his lab and coming up with crazy stuff. I know I was one of the first 10 people to have this surgery and when I was 10 I didn't realize how amazing it was. I was a little kid and I was like, yeah, I'll have that. I'll have that surgery. I, <laughs> all I wanted to do is to get better and I didn't realize how amazing it really was until now that I'm older and I see the amazing things that he's doing. Um, and when, you know, you got this call out of the blue, I mean, Tony's really shy. And it took a lot of convincing to get somebody as modest as Tony to allow us to bring Luke. So, Luke, you go to your communications professors, your major in communications, and you ask them for permission to come to TED, which might have a little bit to do with communications. <laughs> and what was their reaction? Most of my professors were all for it, and they said, bring pictures and and you know, show me the clips online and I'm happy for you. There are a couple that were a little stubborn, but I had to talk to them. <laughs> I pulled them aside. Well, it's an honor and a privilege to meet you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tony.